Welcome back to my animal education series. Today we're going to talk about the spiny-tailed lizard, commonly known in the pet trade as the Euromastix. So really the Euromastix is just the genus that have all of the spiny-tailed lizards in them. So it's just kind of a general term for about 14 different subspecies. And then some of those subspecies are broken down even further, but I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm going to just name them Euromastix for the simplicity of the video. So here I have the Euromastix from Mali, that is the locale that I have here. I borrowed this lizard from Ashley McMullen, so thank you Ashley for letting me borrow this lizard to make this video possible. These guys are found in the northern regions of Africa, in the Middle East, and Iran as well. And they are found typically in rocky, arid, kind of desert-like regions. And along with all the different subspecies and locales, their colors change significantly. So this one here is more of a brown and has some yellow on the sides. But depending on what subspecies or locale it is, they can have more browns, they can have more black, red, oranges, all sorts of different colors that help them blend into the natural environment. These guys, for being a spiny tailed lizard, you can obviously see that they have a big spiny tail on the back of them. So that tail kind of helps them defend from predators. And if a predator is getting too close, they will turn around and kind of hit them with the tail which for a smaller predator is going to hurt a lot more than some of the other predators which I'll get to later. Some of the other defense strategies that they have is that they'll uh, turn around and hiss and show off their tiny little teeth in their mouth which really does not look that intimidating to us but for some predators it might be kind of intimidating to be hit with a tail and then hissed at. A fun fact about the Euromastix is that their colors will actually change depending on how warm or cold it is outside. If it's a bit colder out, their colors will become a lot darker, a lot more of those darker blacks, grays, browns, and colors like that. So they can absorb a lot more of the sun's rays and warm up a lot faster. Versus when it's a lot warmer out, they become a lot lighter, like this guy is here. A lot more of the yellows and the lighter browns are popping up on him currently. But that will not absorb as much of the sun's rays, and they can go find shade in, either in the burrows or under a rocky ledge or under a plant. He's going to walk away from me now, but we have it all covered over there, so he's not going to escape me. But we're going to cut the camera and make sure he doesn't fall off, though. All right, we moved him back, and then I gave him a piece of cabbage to see if he'll take out some sort of a peace offering to see if he'll chill out there. But it was not working off camera, so I doubt it'll work on camera. An interesting fact about these guys is that they can lay anywhere from 5 to 40 eggs, depending on the subspecies. Now, 40 eggs is a lot. But with a lot of reptiles, they do lay a lot of eggs because out in the wild, it's kind of a survival tactic that these animals are going to go out in the wild and a lot of them are going to get preyed upon and not exactly make it to adulthood. So they have a lot of offspring for a higher chance of more adults out in the wild. But when they're coming right out of the egg, my bad, they'll be about two inches long from nose to vent. He just hit my dad in the wrist with his tail. Let's hope he chills out there. But they're about two inches long from nose to vent, and when they're first coming out of the egg, these guys will actually have their mom's feces as their first meal. Now, as gross as that sounds, and as gross as it really is, see dad, he likes me a lot more, he's not hitting me with his tail. But as gross as that is, it gives them a lot, big boost in their vitamins and their nutrients right off the bat when they're coming out of the egg. But once they are finished with that really gross, nutritious meal, they'll move on uh, outside and find some plants of their own to find a more suitable diet for them long term. Some of the animals that will try to eat various Euromastix are anywhere from African wild dogs, hyenas, snakes, birds of prey. We have the African golden cat, which I really didn't know was a thing until this video. And then we also have sand cats, which are a small species of cat that looks oddly like a domestic cat, but they'll try to eat these guys as well. And granted that they're not a super huge animal, so they have a lot of potential predators out there. There are also nomadic tribes in the northern regions of Africa that try to eat these guys as well, because they are quite plentiful. Uh, the IUCN labels these guys as least concern, and according to all their websites, these guys are quite common out in the wild, and some people who are out trying to survive in the desert will try to eat these guys because they're pretty common out there, and they have a lot of protein on their body. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, these guys are quite common pets for people who are getting into the uh, like reptile pets and things like that, because they are mostly vegetarian animals. 
like you do have to supplement their diet every now and then with some crickets and or mealworms and things like that. But for the most part, they will eat vegetables like cabbage and lettuce and things like that. You have to be careful with lettuce though because it has it has a lot of moisture, yes, but it doesn't have a whole lot of nutrients, so you can't feed that on its own. Um, a lot of people say that a 40 gallon is good for an adult, but obviously bigger is um, mostly better depending on the species. But uh, a 55 gallon tank would also work for these guys. Make sure you have a cool spot and a, a hot spot, um, different hides and basking places. And depending on the website that you look at, some places will say 90 or 120 degrees for the basking spot. But really anywhere in there should be fine for these guys because they are ectotherms. And if it's too cold, they'll move out of the area because they will thermoregulate their body temperature. So I always wanted one of these because I thought they were super interesting animals. But I never really uh, got around to getting these guys. So every time I see a uh, friend or anyone in their reptile hobby with uh, Euromastix, I was kind of asking them some questions about it. Um, but I still have just never gotten around to it. Maybe someday, but uh, for now, borrowing this guy for the, the day is pretty cool. But again, thank you to Ashley McMullen for letting me borrow this amazing lizard. He's been super awesome this entire time. And thank you guys for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I will see you next week.